I'm Barbara Kaisman, and today I wanted to talk to you about the promises of God that He gives every Christian. These are usually the desires of their heart, and He'll speak it to their heart. Maybe it's to be healed, maybe it's to be remarried, maybe it's to be married. For me, it was God gave me a promise right after my divorce, and He said He would restore my marriage. It was like an anchor. He was giving me an anchor. He's like, don't go crazy, hold in there, I've got this. I'm going to restore your marriage. Just keep walking with me. And so it did. It anchored me because it was very traumatic. It was extremely traumatic to be divorced. Now, I'm also going to talk about another promise God gave me, and he had given it to me 28 years before that situation happened. It was 28 years ago. I was in the fashion industry. My husband and I, we were fashion photographers and I decided to design a fashion coat where I could go on interviews. Every time I wore that coat, people say, where'd you get that coat? Where'd you get that coat? And I thought, oh, I got something. So I redesigned it, got into the apparel center, got into some fashion shows, got Marshall Fields to see it, but I had a two-year-old son and it was just over my head. And the Lord says, Barb, I showed you I could open the doors, but the time is not right. I want you to wait on this profession. I'll let you know when the time is right, but the time is not right. So I put it away, went back to photography and being a mom, and now fast forward, I'm divorced. And two years after my divorce, God says, you remember that promise I told you I was gonna make you a fashion designer? Now's the time to do this. I want you to start becoming a fashion designer. Well, I had no idea how to do that. I mean, I had been out of the fashion industry for 20 years, moved out of the city. I knew how to sew. I didn't know anybody else who was a designer. I did not know how to proceed, but he wouldn't let me go. He was saying, I want you to start this. I want you to start this. And so I figured out how to start it and God blessed it. It, it, it grew slowly, but it did grow. Well, here's where the two promises kind of intersect. I was in a fashion show where I was able to design anything I wanted to and I decided to design a wedding dress for a second wedding. I thought if I'm going to be married again that God promised me he was going to restore my marriage, I'm going to need a wedding dress. And so I designed my first wedding dress in faith that God's promises was going to be fulfilled. Well I never got to wear that wedding dress. So anyway, let's fast forward eight years after my divorce eight years and I'm like Lord I thought you said you're gonna restore my marriage what's going on I'm having this conversation with God I'm like I'm confused what's going on and he says to me Barb I want you to write a book on divorce I'm like what I go oh my gosh I am so embarrassed and ashamed that I've been divorced I haven't even told the people in my hometown that I was divorced and you want me to tell the whole world Yep, that's what he wanted me to do, tell the whole world that I was divorced. And so I wrote a book, and it went through many revisions. Then in the beginning of the book, I tell my story. And it tells about how the Lord provided for me after the divorce, how he brought me into a new career, how he did this and this and that. He provided for me. And I really didn't tell much, I didn't really tell much against my ex-husband. We fought, and I admitted that, but I was very careful not to tell too much. I didn't feel free to do that. And a little later on, the Lord says, you told your story, now I want you to ask Tony to tell his story. I thought, I wonder if he will. And so I asked Tony, I says, Tony, the Lord wants you to write a chapter for my divorce book. Would you do it? And he goes, yes. Well, what happened was Tony was so honest and his part in the divorce and what he, how he played a part in that, it brought healing to us. It healed so many of my hurts that we now started to get together personally. Well, he lived in another state, so whenever he would come back, we would hang out together. And this went on for about four years to our 12 year mark, 12 years being divorced. And just before that, I had bought another wedding dress it was a cute, short little dress. I never got to wear that dress either. So we came up to our 12 year mark and the Lord says to me, you've got to let him go. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to let Tony go, but the Lord kept saying, you've got to let him go. You've got to let him go. 
And so he had come into town and we had been hanging out. We had a great time. And just before he was to go home to the other state where he lived, I said, Tony, what I'm gonna say now is not because we had a bad time. We had a great time. But the Lord keeps telling me I've gotta let you go. He didn't argue. I said, we're not gonna be talking on the phones. We're not gonna be getting together. This is kind of actually the first year of our divorce. And he left. And that's what it was. It was the first real year of our divorce that I had actually let him go. Well, that was in September and the Christmas holidays were coming up. And um, I had been attending a church with my daughter and there was a gentleman there that had been asking her if she, he could meet me. And she was trying to sell him. <laughs> she was going, mom, he's a great guy, he's a great guy. Her husband's saying, he's a great guy. And I'm like, huh. I opened my mind up to it, but it was during the pandemic and we couldn't even get together at a coffee shop to talk. And we were coming up to the Christmas holidays. And I said, Carla, if you want me to meet him, invite him over to your house for Christmas Eve. And she did, and he accepted. And we were supposed to meet. There was a Christmas Eve service at our church. And then afterwards, we would go to her party. But the night before, I had this dream. And in this dream is a commercial building. It's not huge, but it's a medium-sized commercial building. And across it is this huge sign that says Tony Keisman. I thought, well, I wonder if he bought a building. I'm trying to figure out this dream. I mean, God said, let him go. Now he's giving me a sign, Tony Keisman. I couldn't figure it out. Well, the next night was Christmas Eve. And so I attended the service with this gentleman. And the preacher, I'm not quite sure why he said this, I can't remember why, but he kept saying, he's a nice guy, he's a nice guy, but he's not God's will. And so God was telling me right then and there, I still have Tony Keisman in mind for you. Do not get romantically involved with this gentleman. And so I didn't. We became friends, but we did not get romantically involved. Well, after that Christmas season in the pandemic, Tony decided that he wanted to move back into our state. He missed his family and he wanted to move back. And that's when we really started to connect. We started to get together more on a personal level. And now we had a chance to start to work on some of our issues. We had lots of them and it took some time to work those issues out. But he, he showed an interest. He wanted to get back into our lives. And that was key in us trying to go forward. And after a while, after we had worked through a number of issues and spent more time together and more time together, we started to think, hey, maybe this can work. <laughs> maybe we can get remarried and it could be good. And then he asked me to get married and I accepted. Well, here's so, what's so interesting about God is the day we're gonna get married is our original wedding date and it would have been our 50th year anniversary. 50 years is the year of Jubilee. And I believe God is saying it's gonna be our year of Jubilee, that he's gonna set us free to enjoy each other, to enjoy the marriage that I always wanted, the marriage that is gonna be a blessing, a blessing to both of us. 16 long years. And the other promise, 28 years, long years two promises of god that came true but it took a long time for them to come to pass but they would never have come to pass if i hadn't hung in there and trusted god to bring them to pass you know the bible talks about promises having time delays and in fact it talks about abraham where god promised him a child but you know, it took 25 years before he actually held a child in his arms. And I'm sure he was grateful for that child. And he was grateful for the promise and the, the miracle that it took to produce that child. And in the same way, I was glad that I hadn't quit on God. I was glad that I was going to experience what he had actually promised to me. Now, I don't know what you're waiting on. I don't know what God has put in your heart to be healed, maybe to be married, maybe to have a career that needs to advance. I'm not sure what he's promised you. And maybe it's gonna also take a time delay. Can you trust him? Can you trust him to do what he has promised to do? All I can say is he is faithful. 
He is faithful. Those 16 years were long and hard, but I'm gonna tell you what, they were good. I started a career that he had promised me. I have seven grandkids. I never missed a bill. I saved the house I continue to have. I lost nothing during those 16 years. Everything that was really, really, really important was preserved as I stayed in Christ. Can you trust God? Can you trust God to do what he has put in your heart to do? It's worth it. It's worth it. I hope I can encourage you to trust God to bring forth his promise that he's given you because it's worth it. I'm Barb Kaisman and you've been listening to Dare to Dream Once More.